episode of PDR Tool Time. I'm Daniel Grom with our co-host Vince D'Alessandro and then we have two special guests tonight and today's episode is about motorcycles. We yes. haven't talked about motorcycles in a long time and I thought it was about time. It is about time but before we get into that who's our sponsors? Our sponsors are Mobile Tech RX, Magnetech Matt, Hog Glue Hog Tabs and our new sponsor CBD direct oils. And have you been, so they sent us some samples of CBD oil. And if you guys out there are old as like me and decrepit. Yeah. Falling <laughs> and apart. And pains, CBD oils are fantastic. So they sent us a tincture. You put a couple drops under your tongue and magically all your aches and pains go away. It's actually great. There's no side effects. You can take it with any other medications you have, um, but it literally takes away all your aches and pains. I um, actually take your- it in lieu of taking medication now. You know, exactly. I, I, I when I go to bed, I take it before I go to bed, or if I have a headache coming on, I'll take that instead of uh, some I, ibuprofen or or Tylenol. And you know, you're not doing damage to your liver; it's all natural type of stuff. So I. I'm convinced. I, I've been using it now for about six to eight months, ever since a dispensary opened up across the street from my shop. You know, how yeah. convenient was that? But uh, they're way too expensive. CBD Direct Oils, they actually have good deals. And 10% off if you use the coupon code PDR Tool Time, which is P, yeah, PDRTT, will get you 10% off any of your orders. So look into that. And uh, they support us, so we support them. Yeah, it helps us out. So uh, we appreciate you guys uh, patronize them. Them. Yes. So, Daniel, you, you you've been doing motorcycle tanks for years and years, and you got a few guys out there that uh, are doing quality work, just like yourself. I'm one of them. Not to pat myself on the back. But, you are. <laughs> but you got you asked two guys to come on the show tonight that you know have been doing PDR uh, mobile P, or motorcycle PDR now for quite some time and have your equipment. And do you want to introduce these guys and bring them on? Yeah. These guys kind of rise to the top because they show consistent work on our Facebook page, uh, MPDR world. And if you guys uh, want to learn more about doing motorcycles, you can join the Facebook page. Uh, we have Hambalicious, Stephen Hamby. How you doing? <laughs> Stephen Hamby. Doing that's, great. That's, that's uh, Vince's nickname. Yes. I love it. Hambalicious. How you doing, Steve? That makes and me then, sound sexier than I am. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then we have uh, Tori Jenkins. How are you doing, Tori? I'm doing great. Thank you. Yeah. These guys have shown amazing before and after pictures. And uh, just, you know, we wanted to bring them on the show and show them off a little bit. Yeah. So we've had Steve on the show in the past, which has been great. You talked about your, your retail location. You were a man on the street, weren't you, Steve? Uh, yeah, I was a man on the street. I do not have a retail location though. Right. But, uh, we had you on, yeah. we, we had you talking, you know, about your, your route and everything you do. That's yeah, my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Stick it. Stick with gotcha, me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, you know, we, you just had the episode about shops earlier. Now I'm like all jealous because my buddy Matt's got this nice, sexy shop out in Athens and I'm all jealous of him. So when you say retail shop, it's kind of like, you know, Stick a knife on my side. Kind yeah. Of thing, well, you know, so. All right. You caught on. You caught on to my jab. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> now, Steve, you work for your work with your dad, right? Yes. And so, what what got you into doing motorcycles? What what was the passion for you? Well, um, I've been riding motorcycles for a long time now, and uh, me and several other friends, we all try to take a bike trip once a year. Um, you know, as much as often as we can for me, which is about once a year. Uh, we all ride Harleys down to Daytona or wherever we're going to go. So I've just kind of been, you know, passionate about bikes in general. I had you so, pegged as a Vespa you know, guy. So you actually ride a Harley, nah. huh? Yeah, yeah, I ride a Harley. Okay. I had a uh, Yamaha at first, and then I moved into the Harley world. 
nice. you know, not knocking other bikes. I love all bikes. Indians are really cool too, but yeah, I got a Harley. And, um, since I really like motorcycles and been doing dent repair for so long, when I saw that, you know, Daniel had developed a whole set of tools just for bikes. It was just kind of a no brainer for me. And, um, I really was anxious to get involved with that. And, uh, as you mentioned earlier, I worked for my dad. Um, so I pretty much approached him with that and said, Hey, you know, I'd really like to get involved doing this, but he wasn't on board with that and didn't really want to get into motorcycles. Thought there was too much liability, thought that there, you know, for every 10 tanks, you might be able to fix one or two of them. So he pretty much shut that down and I just kept pestering him about it. And eventually he basically gave in. He said, you know what? Fine. If you want to do it, that's fine. But just do it, do it on your own. You know, I, I don't want anything to do with it. You just do it on your own. Yeah. So that's why anytime you see any video from me, that's motorcycle related or pictures or whatever, it's usually labeled dent hogs. Cause that's something that I just put on the side for strictly motorcycles. I kind of themed it towards motorcycles. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's how I got involved with that. And I was checking, I think I started in, uh, 2015 is when I started bikes. Nice. Nice. Now and that's Tor- probably, Tor- probably yeah. the best thing you've ever done, right? <laughs> do what? That was probably a good decision. Him letting you do it that. It was a very, it was a good decision for me. It was a poor decision for him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah. we'll get into that too because you've actually built a good following down there in Georgia, and you have people sending bikes to you. But uh, to shift over to, over to Tori, Tori, you've been pushing dents for a long time. Eleven years. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, are, are you? Pa- what was your passion? Why? Why the hell did you get into motorcycle tanks? Uh, I was probably about. I got deep into it probably four and a half years ago. Um, got tired of turning them away. Um, I've been doing them probably since I was year two into pushing dents and, uh, uh, you know, do a smaller stuff here, fender there, fender there. And the bigger stuff, I just kept pushing away. Cause I just, I, I, it wasn't something that I liked doing. And then after a, a few of them, I'm kind of looking and thinking to myself, you know, I keep pushing this money away. I gotta, I gotta, you know, either get into it or completely stop doing them. So I went all in, bought everything and, uh, just pushed myself. And, uh, the hardest thing for me to get over was the, uh, the amount of tanks that you can fix versus the, the ones that you can't, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, and, and, and I love, it's actually, it's, I like doing motorcycle tanks a lot more than I do cars. Cause it seems to be a lot more rewarding because the uh, damage is I don't know if it's, if it's more severe, but it's just harder to do. And, uh, I think you get, the customers are pretty, pretty, uh, uh, happy when they see the results when you can save something that's really crushed. Oh yeah, on and it. it's one of those things, you know, like like a a man and his Harley. That's that's his that's his wife, right? That that's like that's his girlfriend. That's his baby, you know. And yep. So so when it, something happens, a dent or a ding on it, of course they're crushed. And and what a wonderful service the PDR offers to be able to fix those things. And uh, it's not for the light of heart, is it, Tori? Oh, it's not not at all. No. Mm-mm. No, and I've had I've had bike you know tanks that I've been working on that, that I completely failed on in the beginning. Even even today, you have some that you think they're going to come out perfect, and you just can't get them. And it's just you know, to me, that's the biggest heartbreak of it all. Yeah, I think uh, that's the reality of it. You know, not all of them are fixable, especially when you start getting into street bikes and stuff like that. I know Daniel, Daniel, you don't even work on street bikes at all, right? You just kind of refuse them altogether. Yeah, I I really try to concentrate on vintage bikes and harleys um those are my two two bread and butters right there um the the older tanks they're they're more easy access to them except for the british bikes they're just harder to mount usually but there's usually not a lot of things in your way they're pretty simple in their design and i like it for that reason um but you know, I have a I have a soft spot in my heart for vintage bikes. And these guys, you get the story of where the bike came from. It's a family heirloom or something like that, or they had it when they were a kid and it was their first bike and they're restoring the bike. And I get into that. I, I really enjoy taking junk and, and bringing it back to life. And, um, you know, cause it's, you know, it's, it's something that you can't replace, you know? Yeah. Now, uh, Tori and and Hambalicious, Mr. Steve Hamby, you uh, you guys, d- d- Steve, did you go all into? Did you get all the PDR tools along with the the tank vice? Yeah, I did. Uh, 
so back in 2015, I basically bought the whole, you know, I guess it, at that point it was just the version one, but I bought the uh, whole kit because I didn't, if I was going to go into it, I was going to go all the way. I didn't want to try and, you know, I'm not, I'm not a penny pincher when I'm going into something like that. So that's me. <laughs> I'm the penny right. pincher. <laughs> okay. Now you guys talking to guys out there, they're thinking about doing this. Is that the the best way to do it? Absolutely. I, I believe yeah. so. And there are many a times guys have been on your page on Facebook, Daniel, and they'd be asking, Oh, I want to do this. Go all in. Just, just do it. You know, pull the trigger. Yeah. yeah. I think that's, that's actually the best way to do it because you have to, you have to dedicate yourself to this because it's not, it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a whole different division of your business. But the one thing I've found that it does is it adds to your whatever your P&L sales says at the end of the year. It's usually the icing on the cake. It's it's giving you extra money without taking away from the cars, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I and and I and I also just really enjoy the challenge. Um, like Tori was saying earlier, it's not. There was a big learning curve for me. The first time I got a uh, tank, it was a, I think it was a Kawasaki Vulcan, and metal was kind of thin. I bought a practice tank off eBay with a dent in it, and you know practiced on it. And you know before I ever took on a paying job, I wanted to make sure I could actually do it and didn't screw someone's bike up. So you know after that, I thought, man, this is going to be you know mounting. It's going to be the hardest part. You know fixing this is going to be easy. Then I got a Harley tank. And it was a fat boy. The dent was the size of a quarter. And that thing took me like two hours to fix the first time. I felt like I had just touched my first dent ever. Um, I was really amazed at how thick the tank was, how difficult it was. It turned out, but I put way more time in it than I originally thought. So uh, the learning curve was there, but, you know, I like to, I like to push the envelope and challenge myself. So once I got past that, now that I'm doing it, like Tori said, it is very rewarding. And, um, and like you had said, with the stories that people give on their bikes, the first uh, fender that I fixed was for a guy. He had a street glide and his dad had passed and left him his street glide. And he had a shelf fall off the wall in his shop and land on the fender and put a massive, well, I say massive, I don't know, football size den on the fender. Mm-hmm. And um, I fixed it for him. And man, the, the look on his face and the appreciation uh, I mean, he was ecstatic and that, that, I really enjoyed that job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know <clears throat> for myself, I, I did not get a tank vice up until when did I get it, Daniel? About two years ago, maybe, yeah. maybe three years ago now. And prior to that, the, the first tank I did was probably back in 2002 and onward. I never shied away from the tanks. I always did them on the bike. And if I was not able to fix the dent because the handlebars were in the way, I'd just tell the guy, hey, you know what? I can't fix it. You know, there's too much in the way. I, unless you want to take off the shield and the handlebars and everything else, I can't fix the dent. You know, and it wasn't until I got the tank vice, you know, a couple, two, three years ago, Daniel forced me to get it. And I still didn't go all in. Uh, I still use a lot of, uh, a lot of my regular tools to fix it. And I know I'm kicking myself by not doing that. I'm, I'm causing more work, <laughs> but one thing lately that has changed the world of all that is the stand liner tools. And I don't know if you guys have any of the stand liner tools. So I, I don't have them to compare them to the the mobile PDR tools, but I've been using the the killer whale and the pirate hook with uh, motorcycle PDR, and it freaking works fantastic. It it's it's amazing. But then again, I'm using normal you know dent dent tools on a daily basis to fix them that aren't you know motorcycle PDR tools. Yeah, what, I have what do you guys tell him? Stuff. <laughs> Go all in <laughs> with that. <laughs> go all in <laughs> but to to piggyback off that i have those those two tools you mentioned i have several standliner tools and i have actually been looking forward to trying to use a killer whale down in like a harley tank the i mean you got the big oval opening on the top it's wide open and i know that'd be a perfect area to get that and you know i love that tool i have difficulty using it on some cars because you can't get it down windows i know mike uh, toledo had put out a little uh tool review and he had mentioned that and I know that that wouldn't be an issue with those tanks because since they're wide open, um, so I'm kind of chomping at the bit to use those on a tank. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're they're it's night and day. Even the the crane tool. I've used the crane tool down there. Uh, Tori, I, I, you know, you sent me some tools and I lost them. We were talking about it, but I used a, a a crane tool on the last Harley tank that I worked on, and I mean, it got the sharpness out of that dent fast without damaging really? the paint. And like, holy crap, you know. Huh. It, you know, if you guys are familiar with the crane tool, it, it, it's like a sickle tool. It, it's all the way around, and it works great on creases on on vehicles. So I figured, hey, let's give it a shot on a tank. And uh, you know, you guys know how thick Harley tanks are. I would think that it would have snapped the paint, and it didn't. And no high spots as well. It was crazy. Uh, my my two favorite things to use out of Daniel's kit, um, getting on with talking about tools, are I like the uh, the hockey puck like to bring any kind of mass up like right away and then i'll go to a soft tip and then from the soft tip i generally go to the white ball and the nylon ball and i'll finish up a lot of stuff with that nylon ball and i'll just sit there and just and because you'd be surprised for how round it is how how small of a pick that you can get with it and and, yeah. and precise push with it you can get that's that's kind of what i like that they're my three favorite out of the out of the whole kit for yeah. tips the nylon ball huh yeah, yeah. I, I, for some reason I don't. I like I love finishing dents with that. Yeah, and uh, uh, you get really nice pushes with it and everything. Uh, I'll go into the one the blunt tip, not the real sharp one that he gave, but the the blunt tip to uh, if you got any like a crease or where a handlebar really got into it. But for the most part, you can finish most of the dents uh, with that nylon ball. Oh, I sure. find, yeah. anyways. Yeah, and were you guys fixing tanks prior to the tank vice? I was, I was doing them on the bikes, uh, what I could, um, and you, you talked about, uh, not having the vice and people taking the, uh, uh, fairing off or the handlebars off. Well, I had a customer, you know, had me working in his motorcycle trailer, waiting to go to Daytona fuel injection, everything out. And, uh, um, I'm not familiar with all the Harley models. I think it was a street glide though, but it, cause it had the fairing stereo, everything in it, but it wasn't the full dress, it had a dent all the way at the tail of the tank at the seat. And I, I could, I could reach it, I could touch it, but I couldn't get my tool down on it because the handlebars, everything ran away. So he got mad at me, put it all back together, stuffed it in the bike, stuffed it in the trailer because he was leaving the next day for Daytona. Doesn't about three, no, well, two years ago, I'm at the Harley dealership. Hey, I have a tank for you to fix. Here it was that bike uh, that the, the customer traded it in. I said I need it off. <laughs> so they took, awesome. they took they took it off for me. I took it to my shop and fixed it. They actually showed the customer when he came back in to pick his new bike up. Hey, we got that dent fixed. And he was all like, well, who did it for you? And they told him it was me. And they're like, well, he couldn't fix it before. So, <laughs> Tom's, they are a changing. <laughs> That's right. They are. <laughs> and what what um, a lot so, of guys don't realize is that when it's on the bike, you know, that tank is mounted with rubber grommets. So it flexes. And it's, it's, it's kind of the equivalent of, I don't know if you've ever been to a body shop and they've asked you to fix a front fender and it's not all the way bolted down. It's like that. It just flexes too much and you just, you end up struggling with it and it takes you twice as long to do it. Um, too much effort on your body. Um, you know, you get it off, you know, you should be using constant heat on a bike. You should have that, the fuel out of it. Uh, you know, I've told a story before. I actually caught a bike totally on fire and my, myself and my partner at the time. Um, because of the fuel in the bike. And um, so getting it off the bike is so much safer. You know, you don't have all those yeah. those issues. And the other thing is, is like when, when there's even a little bit of gas in there, that, that fumes, you know, will make, like if you have a rubber tip, it turns it to a slimy mess. And your glue, if you're taping it, that turns into a slimy mess. Mm -hmm. It's just so much harder. You know, getting it off is, is key. Now, hold on, Daniel, because yeah. this is a little bit of a tech tip because, you know, with with motorcycle tanks, I, I've worked on a, a couple for firemen. Of course, they were red. And they gave me their tips and their opinion as to, you know, ig ignition or the, the possibilities of an explosion. And they kind of debunked it for me, but I think you probably did something a little bit different than others to cause, to cause a fire. But I know, I you know, they told me that it would just flash. It would flash. If your face is over, it's going to burn your eyebrows off. Maybe the hair off your arm, if it's in the way and you're done. Uh, you know, I had one fireman tell me I should flash it before 
I, I even start working on it. I'm like, well, I'm not doing that, you know, because it's the fumes that it ignites. It's like you it's could take the fumes. A, yeah, you the could take a, a, a cigarette and throw it into a, a, a puddle of gas and it doesn't ignite. It puts out the the cigarette or whatever. You know, the, the things that you see in, in movies is not existent. So, like, tell us the story, how you lit the bike on and your partner and yourself on fire, because I think it's kind of key for so, our listeners. So he brought the bike in. We were taking the tank off. We drained it at the time as much as I could, but it left uh, a nice little bit of gas in the very bottom. And it. it was a cold day in Santa Rosa. It was very, very cold. And, you know, I was trying to heat up the shop a little bit. I had one of those space heaters behind me. Oh, a space yeah. heater. That's good yeah. around gasoline. Yeah. Um, and, um, my partner was taking it off and I go, I'm going to grab, I'm going to pull the hoses off and grab the hoses with my thumbs. Well, he pulled it up and he yanked it out of my hand and flipped it up on its side. And the hose just whipped back with a nice stream of, of <laughs> gasoline over my shoulder. And I watched it in slow motion, just watched the stream perfectly go over my shoulder, hit the space heater. And like a fuse, it just went. And there was also gas all below the bike the bike and it just fused up and we just went up in a big whoosh yeah and his he's holding the tank and it's on fire and he thinks it's going to explode so he runs it outside so he he got third degree burns on his hand because he didn't set it down like he should have yeah and the there was a big puddle of gas under the bike so the whole bike is on fire right and i'm like where, where's our fire extinguisher? Yeah, I was just going to ask you, where was your fire extinguisher while this was happening? <laughs> I go, you, don't, you, you don't remember where they are when you need them. Yeah. And so it took me a little bit to find them, grab them. And when you use a fire extinguisher, it makes a big, big mess. And this thing looked like it was total. I had to clean it all up, but a lot of the wires were damaged. So I had to replace all the wiring. I had to detail the bike. Um, it cost me a lot of money just to fix this tank. Yeah. So, well, okay. So, so that's your tech tip, right? Do not <laughs> have a space heater with an open flame yeah. <laughs> around the gas tank, and, right? And the line of all the guys wanting to do MPDR just disappeared. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I, what, what I like to do with the tanks, and I got a lot of them in there drained, but they still have the fumes in them. They're really, you know, I'll take them in and run, put them outside and, and uh, shoot them with some carb cleaner. Yeah. Spray the inside of them out with carb cleaner really good and just let that drain because that evaporates everything out and the fumes generally pretty much are gone Yeah. till then. Yeah, years nice. ago I had a Harley and I had to get it welded the gas tank and and the guy's like I'm not touching it unless you rinse it out with Tide. So, you know, I I had to put Tide in water and, you know, flush out the tank and it actually it it didn't smell like gasoline at all. Maybe I maybe the the Tide detergent actually breaks down the the grease and in clothes, so it maybe breaks Makes down the sense. oil molecules within the tank. But I've never had to do that for any tank. I've never had any ignition or anything like that. But I also don't use open flames. If I need to heat something, <laughs> I use a heat gun or I use my hot box. I use the hot box quite a bit to heat up dents on, on tanks as well. Nice. So so piggybacking off y'all stories, because I have a funny story too. And Vince, you, you had asked, have I always been using the vice or was I doing tanks you know, prior to getting the vice? So the very first tank I fixed, I had a, I was working at a car a lot and a guy brought his bike to me, had a small dime sized dent on the top. I didn't have any tools that could reach it. And, uh, I basically told him, Hey, you know, I don't, my tools can't reach this. And I was basically trying to just, you know, get the guy to leave. And, uh, he said, well, I'm a metal fabricator. What if I go home and I make a tool that will reach this dent? Would you be willing to try it? And I thought this guy's joking. Sure, man, whatever. Yeah, go go make a tool, bring it back to me. The next week, the dude shows up with a piece of rebar that has like three 90 degree bends and the thing just was mangled. And um, he said, all right, I made this for you. I, I, I think it'll reach the dent. And no joke, I put it down in the hole and it touched exactly where the dent was. Yeah. And I fixed the tank on the bike, which we already talked about was, a, was horrible, getting over the handlebars and all that. I fixed it and I thought, Oh my God, I can't believe I just fixed the gas tank. Like the first time ever. And he looks at me and he goes, 
oh yeah he said would would you take the tool as payment for the for the repair yeah. <laughs> and i was so i was so just like dumbfounded that i fixed it i was just like sure man whatever no problem you know it only took me a few minutes once i was on it yeah, yeah. and uh i still have that i i was t- i think i was telling you vince i'm gonna give that to daniel for his pdr tool museum yes because <laughs> the thing the like thing it. is like wicked looking and it's just hanging in my shop it's all rusted now yeah but yeah. uh it was that was That's what got funny. me wanting to do it and then i got the the tools to be able to do it yeah properly that's awesome. now, let me ask you this. Do you guys feel that you, you've been doing them for a while now? Do you feel it has improved your regular dent removal? I think, I think, so. it, I think it, my yeah. eye is more sensitive because you really have to, when you start pushing on the metal, you're, you're seeing micro movement of the metal. And to me, I think that makes you a better dent tech. Yeah, I was talking to Tori about that the other night because I had one that had it was a crease right on the rounded front part of the tank. It was a Harley tank, and I couldn't see the metal moving. And I was using a soft tip. I always try to like to start with a soft tip, and I was really cranking on it, and I couldn't pinpoint where the tip was. And I guess just that area of the tank is so tight that the metal didn't want to move. So I actually switched to a sharper tip at first, to trying to pinpoint where my tool was. And then once I kind of had that locked down, I flip back to a soft tip to finish it out but uh you do you have to you, your eye has to pick up just a tiny little poke to be able to pinpoint where you're at because mm-hmm. you can be cranking on that thing thinking you're near the dent and you can be an inch away from it and not even know it <laughs> yeah that happens a lot huh <laughs> it does yeah. you know and yeah. amazing enough i don't know how our buddy mike toledo does it with line boards i really don't I, I, I it's amazing that he's able to fix huge dents and tanks with line boards. I watch his videos and I just I'm, I, I can't I can't it just it hurts it hurts my eyes thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just too much going on. Mm-hmm. So, so let me ask you this: how how are you guys getting your business? How are you getting tanks into your your shops or or into your hands, basically? Um, I have, a I have a couple Harley dealers and a couple, uh, I guess we call used bike dealers in my area. And, uh, I, I, they feed me, the Harley dealers feed me a pr- uh, pretty decent amount of work right now. I'm kind of slow with it because, uh, we're, 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 where I live in the Northeast, we don't ride in the winter. So everybody's bikes are in storage, whatnot here, probably fixing in about two, three weeks. I'm probably going to get busy when everybody starts dragging their bikes out of sheds and, they realized their kid dropped a shovel on it or they're pushing it out in the yard and it fell over because the grass ground is so soft now from all the snow and rain. But uh, I have, you know, a couple of Harley dealerships and then I advertise through my Facebook page and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and just word of mouth, I'm working on some myself. I'm working on some flyers. The heart, two of the Harley dealers asked me to, to put stuff out on the service counter, some, uh, some counter cards. So I'm working on that right now. And, uh, Actually, I'm starting to get insurance work from the last two years. The one Harley dealership that I was in, I fixed. Uh, there's one red tank that I, I, I'm, I'm really proud of that job. It's, it was a fat boy tank with the embossed flames in it, and they don't make it no more. When the insurance asked if, you know, that they wanted the tank fixed because they couldn't, they can't buy it no more. You can't get it. So they brought it to me for a push to paint, and I ended up fixing it. I didn't think I was going to be able to, but it was one of those you get into. It's like, oh, my God, this is going to turn out. It's going to come out. And uh, after that, now the insurance companies, uh, if they come in on a crash or something like that, they'll say, have your PDR guy look at it first and let us know. If not, then we'll replace it. Or, you know, if he can fix it, let us know how much. So, which is nice. Now, before yeah, you that, get, that, get into it, Steve, I, I wanted to say, yeah. say something on that note. I think that's really important because I've fixed quite a few insurance uh, bikes myself. And I they don't even know that this is an option. I went into the Harley dealership uh, a few months ago to look for a scrap tank to make a template for that that uh, that piece that I make uh, with with Daniel. And for you guys that don't know, I, I make a template that was designed by Daniel, and it it fits your tools and it fits the new uh, fuel injection style tanks. So I went in there and said, hey, do you have a tank that I could measure this off of real quick? Well, he went to the junk pile and pulled out the perfectly good dent removal tank that i could have fixed that dent and it was in the junk pile and i said how many more of these do you have he's like we have a whole stack of them over there and they're just waiting for the scrapper to come and pick up these tanks that i would say probably 40 percent of them were fixable with pdr and 
just a note, you can fix those and put those on eBay and sell them all day long. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. 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 yeah I thought about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. The one Harley dealer asked me if I would do that. They had a couple that they'd go to a flea market and they said, you know, asked if I would do them. I said, yeah. They said, what do you want? And I said, I will work it out later. You know? So. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good busy work while, while you're, you're, you're in Pennsylvania where it's snowy right now and maybe you have a down day. You could be pushing on tanks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's you know that's what I do. They gave they just gave or actually the dealer just gave me a uh, tank. It was junk. The paints broke on it, and it was one for me to kind of test my skill on it because it had a huge crease and it had a um, you know how the clear sometimes whites yeah. on those. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I wanted to do uh, uh, a kind of a tech tip video on how to make that go away. And uh, as I'm having heat on it, pushing it, it went away. So I was like, well, that just ruined that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, and I'm going to use that for a display tank. They gave it to me, you know, do what you want with it. And so I'm going to make it for a display when I go, they, we do our MDA rides. I don't know if you guys have those down out your way. Yeah. Uh, March of Dimes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're real big up here. So they have big drives up here and they want me to set up a a display tent at the dealership, kind of, you know, letting them know, know what my services are and that they, you know, I handle all their work for them and stuff. So, yeah, that's awesome. Now, Hambalicious. Yes, you, sir. You you have you have a different technique with uh, because you work on a lot of tanks down there in Georgia, and it's a fair weather yeah. state where you know people are probably riding eighty percent of the year, right? Uh, yeah, probably. There's a lot of winter riders. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, after that conversation, I'm definitely gonna go into my Harley dealer and start talking to them about insurance work because I have not, to my knowledge, done any insurance uh, bikes. Um, so that's probably part of the market that I'm missing that I could probably try to pick up. So yeah, I'll, uh, go talk to them about that. But, well, here's um, the thing. I, I actually yeah. pull out the Paul Corden prices when it's insurance work, especially with, like oh, yeah. what, what Tori said, it's a, it's a, a tank that is not replaceable. You know, we, right. we had a Kawasaki tank and I charged $900 to fix a dent on it is they could not fix nice. it. And he was paid $1,200 to replace it, but there's no replacement for it. Right. Well, um, I have a few Harley dealers. Um, one in particular that tends to give me a good bit of work um, through the service department mainly. Um, so I get work through that. Uh, I also have done a lot of YouTube videos, and I, you know, I really didn't expect much from that. But I've had a lot of people that have found me just through YouTube videos, send me a message, and want to get a, you know, get a quote, and will ship me tanks. And I was actually surprised at how many tanks I've had you know, shipped from all over. Um, I've got one on its way here to me now from Massachusetts and it's like a 78 CB 550 Honda tank. Um, so they're coming from all over the place. So YouTube's been really big. Uh, Harley dealer has been big. And the other thing is when we, uh, started our website, um, I basically have a section on our website strictly geared towards, uh, motorcycle repair. And I didn't really think, that I would get a whole lot of motorcycle leads through that because it's not front and center on the main page. You have to click a few links to get to that section of the website. Uh, but I've had whenever the season kicks in, cause I feel like motorcycle repair is seasonal, you know, it, it'll peak and then at some point it'll drop off. Um, but I've had a lot of, uh, people send in through the website online request forms, you know, where they post photos to tell me what they have. Um, so I have at least those three areas where a lot of my stuff ends up coming through. Um, there's one local shop near me that every once in a while will call me, but by and large, it's online and through videos is probably my two most uh, effective yeah. ways. Yeah, that's great. And you know, uh, Daniel, he has his whole network of of he advertises in different areas that I'm not going to get into because he doesn't want to disclose some of those things. But uh, for myself, I I have a, a importer. Ex- actually, he's an exporter of Kawasaki motorcycles. So he goes around the country and buys them on eBay and ships them over here to California, and they all go to Japan. There's a huge market for Kawasaki 1000s in Japan and Australia, and all the good ones are here in the United States, and they get top dollar for it. And when I mean top dollar, it's like sickening how much they get for a, a 78 or 79 KZ 1000. It's crazy. So he brings me tanks on a, almost on a weekly basis, and I charge him a wholesale rate because he's just bringing me so many of them. But, you know, I just set up my tank vice. I don't have my tank vice set up in, in my shop year round. 
Uh, I only pull it out when I have tanks just because I, I'm limited on space in my tank, in, in my shop. But uh, it's been really resourceful to me. My suggestion is if you're thinking about getting into this, you know, another thing is to look around the different areas that you're in and see, you know, who works on bikes, mechanics that work on bikes. It's another area that you could talk to because there's plenty of ind- independent guys out there too that might be looking for your services or don't even know that it exists out there, you know? Yeah, builders, yeah. bike builders. Um, there's guys that, you know, make cafe racers. They, yeah. There's custom Harley guys. There's a lot of those guys. You get into a builder that's doing a lot of bikes. They have a large following usually those are your your guys you really want to hunt down and just find. be careful if they're on tv though because you know some of them have really big egos and don't expect you expect you to charge for your repairs at times you know hence i live in long beach and there was a big guy on <laughs> discovery channel for many years about a mile and a half away from my my house that would bitch about me charging without naming names shocker i think he makes guns no. now I, I, yeah, I was going to say, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> so I want to ask a question, uh, Daniel, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, as far as the, the vice systems, I've got the version one. Um, I know you got a version two out now. It's, I've seen the photos. It looks different and everything. So what would be in your, what's the main difference between the two? Um, I'm assuming there's just a lot more variations in tanks you can mount and stuff like that between the two of them but i was looking at them online the other day and i was just curious about that so there's a lot of little accessories that come with version two and it allows you to basically you can mount any and all tanks to it so there's no limitations to it and it is a a stout a stouter base unit so there's no flex um we had when we made version one um we talked about you know shipping cost and and things like that. So that all kind of factored into version one and um, version two just basically uh, gives you more options. Um, you can take your version one and turn it into a version two. Alter does sell a kit um, that will give you all those accessories and allow you to do everything. So you can take your version cool. one and turn it into a version two, basically. Cool. Yeah. I'll probably look into that. Yeah. Cause some of the, the accessories are, are key, um, for, for doing certain tanks, but, um, you know, I can, I'll talk to you more of that about that offline and stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you, uh, what's your advice guys to, guys that are thinking about doing this do you have any advice for them go all in yeah every time i see photos or videos of people that have uh mounting them to like blocks of wood and stuff like that i just i mean i'm sure you can probably muscle through it and it might work if you're not if you're not doing tanks and you just get this one-off tank and you have to configure something but if you're planning on uh pursuing this and you know really trying to go after this market, you need to get the vice because it just makes life so much easier. Uh, I've, I've told several people before that have asked me about it, that if I didn't have the vice, I wouldn't be doing it period. Um, I wouldn't want the hassle and the frustration of having to figure out how to mount different things and screw things together and risk damaging someone's bike. And it's just, I I don't want the headache. So if I'm going to do it, I'm going all in, I'm getting the necessary equipment to do it right. Uh, so that would be my, my advice for people considering it. Cool. Yeah. I'd be the, I'd, I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, I feel the same way as Steven does. Uh, the gentleman that got me when I started PDR, he kind of mentored me from the very, very beginning, uh, just about a few months ago, he's been questioning me about doing motorcycle tanks. He wants to do them. And, uh, I've been pushing him. I'm like, you know, just buy the stuff, just do it, do it, do it. So he actually had one of his dealers down his way, give him two tanks. And he brought them up to my shop and I set up the vice, set everything up and he's seen how everything was. And he was like, wow, you know, this is, you know, and he sat down, he did the repairs. I was, it was actually kind of surreal. Cause I'm looking over his shoulder trying to, now here's You're what you want to do. Him yeah. I'm mentoring him and uh great guy. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he, we had a great time and he loved it. And, uh, you know, so I think he's at that point now where he just has to push the button and, uh, 
and do it. And, uh, but he saw how, how much easier it was because he's been fixing them on the bikes, what he can, what you couldn't, what you can do. And now that he's seen what, what the possibilities are with the vice and everything. And, and he, he was just like, forget it. And he goes, yeah, yeah. It's yeah not, and it's, it's one of those working. things too. You know, when, when, uh, when you have the vice, you know, you get that vice from ultra it, it comes and you're like, holy crap. What the hell did I just get myself into? It's like an erector set, right? And the sorry, Daniel, but between you and Ultra, the friggin' instructions are the worst ever. Now I have version two. Version one might have been a little bit easier, but you did a piss poor job in instructing people how to put that thing together. But it comes together. It it does happen, right? It's it, it's that way by design. Right. Okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be hard. You, you have to you have to pay your dues to get into this industry. Sure. If you can't figure out how to put it together, then you just don't need to be doing this. Yeah. Right. That and <laughs> Daniel's a very lonely man and he wants you to call him and say, Daniel, how do you put this damn thing together? Yeah. I encourage you guys, always call me. You can always call me and talk about motorcycles anytime. I'm J- just don't leave that. a message because he's not gonna listen to it and don't put it on Facebook because he's not going to respond to you on Facebook. <laughs> so it, text him. <laughs> it, Daniel and I had talked about this um, just the, I don't, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about something. And uh, um, when we're, when we're uh, doing the motorcycle tanks and stuff and not all the tanks are the same. And that's some of the biggest challenges is being able to mount them. Yeah. And part of the thing I like about it is I have a little, little, uh, Lincoln MIG welder, if I need to make a bracket, you know, I have my angle iron there, I have a piece of steel there, I can, you know, weld something together, drill it, make it, make a bracket, and then, you know, and uh, get the tanks to mount that way. Uh, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of MacGyvering that goes in on some of these older tanks, or even some of the, like, like you know, he's not doing the uh, street bike tanks, I've done a few of them, and some, man, they can be a real, real bear to uh, mount. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll take that time. I'll take that time to plug the Facebook uh, page, the MPDR World, because um, you know there's been many times where I've had a question on how to mount something. I just posted in there, and someone has encountered the the tank or has or something similar to it somewhere down the line can give you some advice. Um, and uh, you know, me and Daniel were messaging the other day, uh, and I know on the Facebook page there's albums. You can actually start albums. So. What I'm thinking guys uh, should do on there is when they start getting you know, into tanks, whatever the tank is, take some photos of the gas tank set up, how you mounted it, everything, create an album, you know, 2005, Harley Davidson, Street Glide, whatever, uh, Yamaha, whatever. And that way, when guys go in there and they start posting pictures saying, how do I mount this, whatever, you can search the albums and see if anyone's done one like that already. Yeah. And um I'm, I think I'm going to start doing that with all the ones I do in the future, just to try and give guys some information to help out uh, in that area. But yeah, that's uh, if you're going to, yeah. And that, and that's the other, you know, that would be the other tip. Go all in and join that page. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Now, here, here's one thing that I want every guy to, to learn out there. If you're doing this, the number one question you want to ask, is it fuel injected? So if a bike on a is Harley, on a Harley, no, any bike, really? Any bike, if it's fuel injected, there's going to be a large opening of some sort. Oh, right. Okay. You know, Harleys, they're normally on top, but that tells you a lot of information. So, one, find out if it's fuel injected. Um, and then the second one is get a picture of the, the opening. You know, I see guys going onto the, the Facebook page and they just post a picture of a tank, but you got to ask for the picture of the fuel opening. You want to be able to look down that neck and see what's there. Um, it tells you a lot. And then once you got, and then the year make a model, because if you have the year make a model, you can do a Google search and you can find a lot of information about a tank on Google and see a lot of different photos, different angles. They'll have pictures of the tank turned over. So you can see what the backbone of that tank looks like. If it's shallow or, or deep or, you know, gives you a lot of info. How to yeah, I do it. that all the time. I go on eBay and look and see if I can find photos just to try and find out what the access is like, especially when someone sends you a picture and the tanks on the bike, you have no idea what's underneath there. So, you know, if you can find a photo like that, that can help you take the job or turn the job away and price it accordingly. Yeah. And I think the biggest, the biggest challenge ever will be 
you know, how to mount the tank. And when you're dealing with production tanks, it's fine. You know, you will get faster. You know, you'll like, okay, that's what I used to to do it last time, and you're going to mount it really quick. Uh, but there's always those custom things. And I remember about two years ago, I had, uh, for you guys that are motorcycle buffs, the, uh, Kenny Roberts, Team Team Roberts with Yamaha, I had one of his tanks in. And he was, he's a huge star. He won many Grand Prix and all that stuff. And this was a $10,000 tank at the time when it was made. There was only four made for this bike this year. It was aluminum, super light, lighter than, you know, uh, a dent tool. It was super light. It was huge. It held a lot of gasoline. And I had to figure out how to mount this thing. And I still mounted it to that tank vise, that, uh, you know, the, the tank vise. And, you know, it was really rewarding because it's like, okay, this guy's an old timer. He's retired. Someone bought this tank and spent thousands of dollars to mount it up on the wall, but they didn't want this big old dent in the size of the side of the tank. Even though I would have probably left it because it was a a dent that was caused by Kenny Roberts going down. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I fixed it anyways. But it, you know, I think that's one of the things with the uh, tanks that if if you think it's boring and mundane fixing door dings all the time take on motorcycle pdr because you will definitely be challenged every time you pull out your tools to fix one yeah you just one of the things you you don't realize if you're if you have never worked on a motorcycle that the possibilities are a, a lot greater on a motorcycle tank i mean something that would be stretched on a car and you'd say no to is a possibility on a motorcycle tank wouldn't you agree I would. Yeah, definitely. The, the, I remember having a sportster tank and it had a really sharp dent up near the top and it was a, like a heavy metal flake, like a blue heavy metal flake. And this was one of my early tanks. So I didn't think it was going to be, I underestimated. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it ended up being. And by the time I was, by the time I had the metal flat, it was the, the curvature was back. Everything was fine, but it was rough in the center. I mean, it was, I mean, it had a lot of texture. I mean, I could feel it with my finger and I thought, oh, I just screwed this tank completely. Well, I'm just going to cut and buff this thing and hope for the best. And at that point, after doing that, I was so amazed at how much clear is on these Harley tanks. You can, uh, you can sand a lot on a Harley tank and polish it up. I think you can do it way more than you can on a car. Oh yeah. Um, Cause you know, they got to lay, they got to put so many layers of clear to cover up all of the pinstriping. And if they have decals and stuff like that, and I was able to sand the roughness out of that and polish it. And you could not tell at all uh, that there was any texture in it once I was done. Yeah. And uh, from that point, I was just like, man, you know what? I love Harley tanks. They're, I think they're really forgiving as far as fixing them. I do too. Yeah. I yeah. think I think one of the biggest challenges with the with, besides the matte colors is the high metallic colors. And Stephen and I talked about this the other day. Um, when you're pushing, it's very hard or very easy to get the metallics to flop on the Harley tanks. Uh, one wrong push, and next thing you know, you got. I mean, you didn't poke it or nothing. You just have the metallics flop, and you're like, oh. And you know, certain light, the way you're catching it, man, you can see it. Maybe the owner might not see it, but you can see it, and you're sitting there and you're fighting that. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, silvers, you have to be real careful. Of yeah, and, and, and for our listeners that don't know what that means, it, you know, it, when you're working on a dent and on a, a solid color car, you have no worries of the the you know the the paint flopping or anything like that. But when you're dealing with metallics in some of these tanks, you have a bigger metallic flake in there that you do on say like a, a Toyota Camry or something like that. So it, what happens is it ask, actually shifts the metallic flake that's within the paint. The dent could be completely removed and completely straight, but the, the the way that it was sprayed, you've now moved the the pattern of that metallic flake, and now that's what you're seeing, and it's a disruption in it. Yeah, it's really trippy because, like you said, you'll rub your hand over it, you'll look at it, it's and gone. the curvature's flat, everything's perfect, but when the light hits it, it's like it's like the paint under the clear has like little highs and little valleys and stuff, and when the light hits it, it just looks like, you know, it looks like texture, that, but you can't do anything about it at that point. Yeah, yeah. It's really yeah. hard to, to describe that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So. It's like anything. You get you get to know something and you 
figure out work out work aways or work work arounds i should say sure uh, and that's yeah. the difference yeah. too when you're working on a tank rather than a car you know sometimes on a on a car you'll start with a sharp tip if it's a sharp dent but you would never really sh- start a sharp dent on a harley tank with a sharp tip no no, no. i hardly ever use a metal uh tip on uh any tank usually yeah can well, I ask I both, both Daniel and Vince a question here? What's your favorite tips to use out of the kit? Well, I, I don't I have use the, kit. the soft tip. <laughs> I use the soft, the, basically the the vinyl soft tip, and then I wrap it with Tessa tape. Uh, Tessa tape is the best thing uh, going for uh, wrapping your tips because it's heat resistant. And you want to keep constant heat on a tank when you're working on it. And that gives you a little bit of traction as well, but that's probably my favorite tip. But I also use a lot of, of the red tips from Dentcraft. Um, I'll have a whole line of them. Um, are you talking I, like the R R R 40 with the cherry tip? Cause you no, went close to I, that in a second on a, on a tank. No, I use oh. bigger, the bigger ones. I use like the big mushroom tip, oh, right, R, okay. R12, R 15, yeah. something like that. Or four. I'm sorry. that That's what I was referring yeah. to. I, Other I, bigger ones. One of my favorite tips to use on a tank is the phenolic tips from Ultra, the, which look like wood. That's compressed wood. And it's a, a mushroom tip. that I usually start a dent with that. Uh, I also, I step it down because the majority of the tips that I use on tanks are Ultra tips. They're just not in the kit. They came with the regular double bend, you know, uh, A36. Uh, interchangeable tips, but I usually start with a chair rail tip and I, I tend not to use a lot of tape uh, because I make precise pushes and I don't slip all that much. I, I position myself in a way and you got to think I'm also a, a dent wizard tech. So I tend to work upside down. So it's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. That was the last tank you did. It was upside down. Yes, exactly. I actually <laughs> turned the tank upside down on the last Harley tank. <laughs> that way I didn't have to go upside down. Uh, but I, I've always been trained. The Dent Wizard technique uh, upside down is you have your hands close to you. So your hands aren't extended like monkey bars up above. So, you know, working upside down, you always have your hands close to your chest and have, in my opinion, better control over the tip. So I don't get a lot of slippage and, and things like that. But I, I usually start with that. I do use metal tips to finish dents quite a bit. Uh, I'll go to a blunt tip to finish a dent. Very rarely would I grab something sharp like an edgy tool uh, tip, like a gator tooth. Maybe if I had a really small micro low, I might use a gator tip to just pick out that little low spot. But like like uh, Hambalicious said, I'll just go in there and color sand and polish or and color sand those pick marks out anyways. So, yeah. If you're not color sanding on a tank, you're not making a tank hundred percent perfect in my opinion. Yeah. And sometimes you have to color sand. You have to, 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 to see where you're at. Well, to see also to see some lows that you still have. Yeah. So you might be 90% done and you got, you go and cut and buff and then it's like, okay, I have a few low spots that I need to go in and pick out. Yeah, and Harley You'd also tanks. be amazed at how many. Sorry, Tori, go ahead. No, that's fine. I was just going to say you'd also be amazed at how many crowns you're going to have on a tank, just because there's so many rounded areas. When yeah. a, when a dent gets punched in on a tank, I mean, I've had crowns around the entire thing, top, bottom, left, right. Just you, there's a lot of knocking down that's going to be happening. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Harley tanks really aren't that nice from factory. If you t- if you go in a showroom and run your light across them, they're they're. There's a lot of lot going on in the Harley tank, even after after you know from brand new. Yeah, and I think the other thing that a lot of guys that are getting into this, you, you will be using your hands. You know, you will be feeling that contour and see if there is a crown. You know, we're, we we have to bend light. We have to bend our our reflector lights along the dent, and sometimes you just can't get that reflection. You have to feel for the dent and feel if there's still you know a high spot like a body guy would. Would you guys yeah. agree? Oh, I, I have found definitely. myself doing that. Yeah. Uh, not, uh, also, on the opposite side, you, you use your feel when you're putting your tool in the tank, and I sometimes close my eyes and I'll feel the dent from the tool, kind of like lock picking, basically, um, to see where I'm. To give me a general location, and then I can 
start pushing and find my my tip. And that's why Daniel Grom's hands are insured for $1 million like Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> I know the Harleys with the bigger fuel openings, I'll stick, I'll have my hand right on the tip and I'll just, you know, run it in there while I can if I'm pushing off the tunnel yeah. and just keep my hand right there and just kind of guide the tip with, with my hand as I'm pushing or pulling or. Now, do you, know. you guys, do you guys have the extra wide handle from ultra yet? I don't. I don't. No. Okay. You need to go buy that. Yeah, I have two hundred dollars in credit for Ultra, so that's probably I've been dying trying to figure out what I wanted to buy. <laughs> yeah, get, we'll get well, a ratchet. Maybe it's make it ratchet. And you can buy me one too. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> get, yeah, get, you, get it ratcheting. Now you don't need I'll, that one ratcheting. No, I love my ratcheting Ultra handle. All my tools have been chopped off and octagoned, and oh man, I'm a, I'm like about crazy. to start that process here soon. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. So well, I got a motorcycle I, tech tip. Yeah, yeah. For it. We're nearing the end of the show here. We're almost an hour yeah. in, so we we better uh, gotcha. Throw out some motorcycle tech tip tech tips. All right. So Daniel mentioned heat using heat on tanks. Um, I would. I'm always going to use heat. I don't care how small of a dent. I don't care how shallow of a dent. I'm always going to use heat because the one time I didn't, I cracked paint, and it wasn't a very big dent. So always use heat and. If you're going to knock down, let the tank cool off before you knock down because every single time that paint's going to be soft and you're going to make divots in the paint. Um, you may not be denting the metal, but you're divoting the paint. So heat it up when you're pushing, cool it down before you tap down. That's my tech tip. That's awesome. Good job. You know, you, Corey, you got anything? Wait, hold on. Yeah. I, on that note, let me, let me elaborate on that because I use my hot box for that. You, you guys saw a big fat Greek wedding, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. You know how the guy, the dad walked around and used Windex everywhere? Windex for everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, that's me with my hotbox. I walk around the shop. If I'm going to fix it, then I'm just, I, I zap it really quick and boom, boom, boom. You know, it's a little bit quicker sometimes than using a, using a heat gun. But for the guys that have that, I just wanted to throw that out there. Sorry, Troy. Cool. Yeah, no, that's fine. And mine would be uh, stay away from glue pulling anywhere around any stripes or decals on the tanks. Uh, yeah. you, you're going to pull it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just think about what's, what's holding that sticker on. <laughs> it's just some little bit of glue, you know, so they're very vulnerable. Yeah. Mine would be uh, along that. And with matte finish, I glue, I've glue pulled on three or four tanks now without any issue with uh, dealing with the matte finish. And they were imported. They were Japanese tanks. So the metal moved actually. I don't think the metal moves very good on a on a sharp dent on a Harley. I wouldn't even try it. And most of the time, yeah. it's in a decal area. But on a Japanese bike, you'd be surprised. And even if it's matte finish, it's bonded on there really good. You could glue pull. You're the yeah, only. I'm, go ahead. the the only The only area I've ever had any luck on a Harley tank glue pull and, and, and tank was a Sportster tank, and that was uh, the new style Sportster tank. It's kind of more of a teardrop down board down by the seat. Other than that, I mean, I've tried to glue some shallow stuff out of like fat boy tanks and stuff. And it's just like, forget it. I'm just going to put a tool on it. I'm just wasting time. Yeah. Yeah. It's thick. I've only glued pulled on two tanks. Um, and I'm actually going to upload a video here in a couple of days of the uh, Yamaha, uh, Yamaha striker. It's an old repair, but I finally got around to editing a video has a huge, huge dent in the tank. And, um, it didn't have the back backbone was high. I couldn't get a tool on it. And the opening underneath the dent was a really, I mean, I couldn't get anything bigger than a three eighths diameter tool on it. And the dent was the size of, I don't know, a volleyball. It was huge. So I ended up starting that with glue pulling, called the customer ahead of time. It had flames and I was worried about pulling the paint. He basically said, I'm replacing it if you can't fix it. So go for it. So I glue pulled that and actually was able to fix that. And then I used the cold glue. I posted a video a while back. I used the cold glue on a BMW tank to shrink a dent uh, that was maybe, I don't know, grapefruit size down. Uh, smaller, more manageable with a tool. Yeah. So I've only glue pulled twice and never on a Harley. Yeah. God, I can't wait to get my Glexo. The Glexo is re <sighs> legit. You should see the dent I fixed on the Tacoma today. Great stuff. Yeah. Great yeah, stuff. It's amazing. <laughs> Daniel, I know you have a, a list full of uh, tech tips for MPDR, but just give us one on the way out here. Uh, I can't mention this one already, but I. Uh, you know, everybody talks about using packing tape, but I switched to black packing tape because when you're working on a decal, if you're working on a dent on a decal, that detail decal really screws with your, your eyes and you can't see the detail 
um, like you should. And getting black just makes it look like you're working on a black car, you know? Yeah. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing that drives me crazy is I see guys working on motorcycle tanks and they're using their limited light and they're, they're actually putting it on the tank and you get too that's much movement. Me. Huh? Yeah. You get too that's, much that's movement. Me. Get, that's get me. up a, a nice wide light, a standalone light. And, uh, DNE just came out with one and it's a small mini one and friggin' love this thing. And, it's not even on the market yet. I think um, uh, Dent Tools USA is going to be carrying it soon, hopefully. Um, but that little light is, honestly, I, I use it in my shop more and more because it's so lightweight. You just grab it and you just pick it up and, and it works so freaking good. D&E is my favorite light. Everybody knows that, I think. Yeah. But um, yeah. it works really well. That's great. Well, listen, Tori, we want to thank you for coming on. Mr. Steve Hamby, Hambalicious, thank you for coming yes, on once again. We will. Everybody's going to start calling him that now. Yes, <laughs> I know it. You know, it's all good. That, that I'm, was changing, kinda... I'm changing the name in my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you know what, Hambalicious, it is. <laughs> so, it's perfect. So I'll take uh, it. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Yeah, awesome guys. We I will really thanks appreciate for it. We will revisit yeah. this again in the future. We'll have you guys on again and talk about this stuff again and revisit it. And we want to always, you know, let our listeners know that we appreciate everyone that listens to our show. John will be back next week. Daniel's going to go on a hiatus here in a couple weeks here. So we're going to have Hudson on and we're going to have a whole bunch of new guests coming on here. So make sure you tune in. And uh, Daniel, what, what do you got to say to our guests? Level up your MPDR tools and keep it stiff. This has been another episode of PBR Tool Time. 